But good morning, everybody. Everybody is online. While well, I'm looking into the faces, more or less coffee was successful. <laughs> um, I'm more than delighted to be here uh, in that morning. As you see, due to our international customers and international people over here and uh, international uh, police forces and other forces, we're going to do uh, that keynote in English. Um, I hope everybody will understand. I'm going to do my very best. Um, my English is not the very best, so be uh, patient with me. Um, my head is always like translating and telling you the story. So what's the matter? We're going to start at the bottom. Um, I'm still more than delighted that we are not ha only having the opportunity to present what we're doing. We are customers as well. Um, we bought in 2021 um, the Paladin Forensic Lab and we started to work. And for us, it was like changing a complete process. Because what we all know when we are working on forensic topics elsewhere, with child abuse, with everything what you can imagine, it was always a kind of dirty, nerdy work, sitting on the knees with a laptop and uh, trying to figure out the evidences. Um, most of you, or some of you, can imagine how it is work, how, uh, how it is working in a special field like that. And so we decided to be more professional. We got into contact with MH servers, and um, I'd like to show you how we are processing today, how we're working today, and how Paladin and every well product, maybe you are from you vendors, even too. Um, is helping us to assist to work on our tasks. The case Rainbow Boy is a little funny because, um, well, things are happening. Things are happening with police forces too. A little bit embarrassing, maybe, even, but um, it, is a, it was happening just uh, three, four weeks ago. And I'd like to, you to know what we did at this crime scenery. Um, first of all, who am I? My name is First Lieutenant Andreas Abogast. I'm working at the State Bureau of Crime, Northern Westphalia. Well, you can say for, for everybody who is not here from Germany, it is like a little FBI. So we are just representing one state <laughs> <laughs> in Düsseldorf. Exactly. Um, um, representing 17 million people, uh, the biggest state here in, um, in Germany. And, um, well, our, our unit, our department, has at the moment 300, 320 people um, just working there as cybercrime specialists. And uh, me and my team, we're here to enjoy um, these days with you together. Well, I don't want to, to, to leave you there with, with some technical topics or um, just I'd like to start easy today in the morning. Yeah, because I think you, you guys are, or the most of you, um, have even an idea what we're talking about when, we're, uh, when we have uh, artifacts and evidences. Um, I think this is something for later. Um, what, is, what was happening with us is just the process and, and the result, what we have. Um, the process um, was um, we had to change our complete IT environment when we were thinking to use the Paladin. Because the Paladin is staying downstairs the whole day in the garage. And nobody of us was interested to work in the garage. So we had to, to fix the system around. And we had to do that in advance, before we are able to start with our, uh, with our work. So we needed about, let's say, half a year to prepare us, to prepare, uh, to prepare our group, and to build a group um, to, to, to educate people uh, they are able to work with this special equipment. Um, the first output was that we have created a group, the name is DEG, Digital Intervention Team, or the Digitale Einsatzgruppe uh, in German, um, just to make sure that you have people there knowing what they are doing there. The first idea was to take the key, to give it to anybody else and say, okay, we are renting that car to anybody who needs it, forget it, it's not possible. <laughs> that was 
even another three months of working with us to educate us to um, work with and on the car. Um, our car's name is not anymore Paladin. Uh, the name is Modal. It is the Mobile Data Analytic Laboratory. Um, it is a kind of toolbox. Yeah? So as you see, you need three things, the process, the stuff, and the tools. And when, you, when these things are together, you are able to start to work, and that's what we did. Well, when we had our first missions with that car, it was even a kind of surprise for us what is waiting for us. Yeah, I don't know if you from behind can see the picture. This is an agricultural company in the middle of nowhere with 1,200 cows. So we were there and thinking, is it possible that we are on the wrong mission? Why the heck we should go to that agricultural company to count 1,200 cows? Yeah, because let's think. Everybody is thinking about cybercrime. Everybody is thinking about, in German, let's say, cybercrime in engeren Sinne. Yeah, what means uh, uh, hackings like DDoSing, like uh, uh, ransomware. But no, IT crime and digital crime is everywhere, even on that field, as you can see. And what was happening? We had these fellas over there. <laughs> And they were counting the cows. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it was an um, economic offender. He was um, having cows and meat and milk and was selling it for uh, as a, a special biological food. Very expensive, but it was, the last, it was rubbish. And uh, of course, they had a complete um, um, IT surrounding where they were uh, producing. And everything was a kind of IT controlled. Of course, if you have colleagues from regular police forces, they are confronted with these things, they have no chance. So it was our task and our duty to go to this crime scenery and even work um, with our colleagues in this, for us, very, very far away topic. But at the end of the day, without Paladin and without our work, we were not able to solve this in a really proper way. It was... Um, the usual things we were doing at the end. We had artifacts, we, are, we were analyzing them, we were, looking, we were seeing evidences and seeing what the, what the company was doing, where the offenses was happening. So we decided at that point, okay, we have to offer our service to, let's say, everybody in police forces. That's what we did. We did a kind of roadshow. We were going into even the little police stations and telling them, hey, we are there. And we are there to assist you in whatever offense you have. And it needs not be cybercrime or uh, child abuse, child porn, whatever you have. Uh, what you regularly think why this car could be used. So, but what is police officers' main goal? At the end of the day, there's one point there we're really, really happy. You can imagine? That's what we want to do. <laughs> we want to see the handcuffs. We want to see somebody lying on the ground, he is guilty, and that's, then we're happy. Of course, in areas of ransomware, um, well, it'll be a little bit difficult. Flight tickets to Russia are not so available at the moment. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm going to show you that that really was happening and that we really were able to do that. I have to leave you with some words, just for, um, let's say, let's say some some words depending on our group on the DEG. So we have combined times of cybercrime or other crime, let's say, um, that requires that we have a good, a really proper experience in our police processing. This is not only to see the artifacts, as you know yourselves who is working at police forces we have special programs own um, let's say own office programs where we have to transfer all these things all that what we have in evidences has to be transferred to our system sometimes it needs a little time to 
to, um, to start to working on this process. It is not possible just to do it and push on the button and do it and everything is working. No, we have to learn and uh, to produce our own processes. We have a high level of know-how and creat creativity. Of course, we are all here. We are all interested in these new products. Um, um, I can tell you it was a long way um, to, um, to tell our decision makers what we want to do and why we need the Paladin. It was a really, really hard and long way, but at the end of the day, everybody is, um, everybody is uh, happy because the last point is the most intensive one. It is the rapid response. As police officers, we are used, I was working in Düsseldorf Old Town, and we are used to somebody is fighting with each other, we are seeing the crime scene, yeah, we can take that guy, we can put it into jail, we can write our report, we have everything we need. We have the offender, we have the evidences, um, we can write the report, we can give it to the public prosecutor and everything is finished. Are we used to do that with cybercrime or IT related crimes? No. It is taking weeks. Yeah, it is taking months. Yeah, already our offender is back home. Maybe he's even not sitting in prison because we have no evidences. It takes days and days um, to, to extract everything, and the rapid response will make us again real police officers. Well, what we are imagining, imagine what we were imagining, uh, beginning to find, was of course that one. <laughs> yeah, Münster, exactly. It was a, it was a, um, yeah, a guy that was ho was hosting child porn and child abuse uh, videos, everything, and um, that was a situation we were confronted with. We did not have our modal laboratory. So, who of you guys is able to store 200 or 300 terabytes of data elsewhere on a storage in field? <laughs> yes, you're laughing. <laughs> are you? No. But yes, we are. We are now able to do. And we're more than happy than that, because that was a hard learning process for us and for our decision makers too, that it was not possible. Yeah? And still, after two years of selecting the data, it is not quite clear in that case what was happening in this crime scene. It still takes time, and we have, at the beginning, no idea what we had on this IT system. I already asked this question, yeah? just for having it in mind again, who is able to secure 200 terabytes of data on field? So if we look at several missions we are able to fulfill now. Of course, everybody is thinking about, okay, we are doing forensic things, yeah? No, 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 it is, it is a lot more. Um, outstanding extortions and kidnappings. Well, why not to use that car as a single point of contact for police forces when they are directly in the field to connect us with the people they may recognize this, uh, uh, um, this crime scenery. You are remembering at the Christmas market, when this uh, truck was driving into the crowd, yeah? of course the people were doing videos, the people were doing photos. Yeah? And how was police able to get that days or weeks later? But here it is possible, we, we, we are going into the field with our modal truck and we are giving them a QR code to scan, to do swiping and giving everything to the police on scene. This is, as I described before, the thing we need as police officers to work as real police officers again, yeah? with the evidence now. IT-related attacks, of course, DDoSing, uh, ransomware, no question. Um, High-skilled high -skilled perpetrators, we have IT um, everywhere, especially in economical crimes, we are really, this is a big task for us. Um, major inc incidents as a truck driver is going into the crowd, uh, for example. Notice portal, that's what I described you now. So we have the possibility to tell the people, hey, we are there, we are your single point, and you can swipe your data just with the thumb 
um, to the police. Well, this is what our single point of contact, by the way, is looking like. We don't need 200 terabytes on data there. Now, this is not the point. We are needing, we, we need little data. Um, Aris Amri, I don't know if you guys know him, was the guy who was driving into the crowd. He was able to go to Italy. Um, four, five days later, when was his photo online? I have no idea. But if the people would have had the opportunity to send us the picture immediately, and we can put it through this car into our police structure with 1,200 police officers around, yeah, everybody, his iPhone uh, in the pocket, and we can send this picture there, we're talking about 500 kilobytes, <laughs> not 200 terabytes. But we are able to, to, to deliver that service now, and it was kind of impossible before, and we had not even an idea that we would like to do that. So we were seeing before, we need a kind of creativity to work in that topic, and that's what we are, of course, here doing, and that's what we were doing with MR service. Uh, Dirk is there, <laughs> so if you need to talk with him <laughs> today, he will be available. Um, this is our car. Well, what we're doing here, um, um, is, is, is an immediately uh, an important thing, transferring data to the decision makers. We have a video conferencing system here. It is online here. So what did we do? We have an IP cam, and just when the special forces were going into the offender's house, we can video the scenery, we can transfer it in our war room 200 kilometers away, and let the decision makers be part of our mission. Dirk was able to transfer the data immediately, some taken photos, some evidences, even into that video conference system, even to show the decision makers again, hey, that are the evidences we got immediately here on the scene. And then they have the opportunity to say, okay, this guy is now going into handcuffs. Yeah. We were never be able to do that in IT-related um, crime sceneries before. If anybody did, I want to talk with you <laughs> a, little bit, uh, a little later to, to inform me how you were able to do that. In Nordrhein-Westfalen, this is here now the first opportunity. Let's talk about Rainbow Boy just shortly. Um, it is a little bit embarrassing. How much time is left? Well, okay, <laughs> sounds good. Um, Rainbow Boy is a 17-year-old script kitty. Um, he called himself in the internet like that. Um, we did not know him, but what was happening? Um, we have uh, we had um, police front end web page of a little police station uh, in Lippe, <laughs> and um, it was attacked through Rainbow Boy. Um, not that Rainbow Boy was a kind of um, hardly expert. Yeah, he was not, definitely not. But he was a kind of mad because he was caught by police some days before, and he was locking himself into his uh, room at parents' home and uh, figuring out what to do, how to penetrate um, uh, police forces. And he hacked our our website, he was choosing one of these uh, well-known DDoS apps, and regularly you should think, well, it should not work. Uh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> website was down. Of course, if you, I, I don't know if somebody of you guys here is from the Ministry of Inner Security or something like that. If you, I know if, if, if this information goes to the ministry, well, it is a kind of spooky, yeah? <laughs> because they want to know exactly what is up there today, and we're still not talking about 200 uh, terabyte of data. Another idea of a mission, another idea of a topic, what we are able to solve now. So what was the result for Rainbow Boy? Um, of course, uh, he had some visitors at 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah? <laughs> mm. For him, quite uncomfortable. For us, quite good, because first time, 
we were able with our modal truck to set up the IP cam on this scene and giving all these information into the war room as I told you before. Rainbow Boy was not at home. He was in a friend's home. We did know the friend's home address and the same scenery. He had uh, visitors at 10 minutes past six. Yeah, But then Rainbow Boy was uh, caught. But Rainbow Boy did not want to talk with us. <laughs> and he did not want to tell us what he do. He, even he had the idea, no, no, I don't know anything. What a surprise. What a surprise. Well, let's see from the forensic point what we did and what were our tasks. Of course, we transferred the situation by IP cam. We got his PC. We got his HDD. Um, we had some artifacts. We had his mobile phone. Um, we were not quite sure. Oops. We were not quite sure what kind of uh, technique he uh, additionally had in his house. So that means at first time we had to use nearly all our technique we have stored in the modal. Of course, you can. I think you will discuss later what it is. I don't want to tell you now. So even I think uh, Dimitri and all the others of MR service they can tell you um, exactly um, what we have. We checked the network. Yeah, so we used Wi-Fi Hunter and other products to see what kind of uh, mobile phones, what kind of access points, everything he has in his house. Yeah, we used the Ant Analyzer to um, uh, take the stored data and analyze it rapidly. We used Axiom and X-rays and all these things, as you might know, um, to figure out what was happening with Rainbow Boy. Yeah, but the main thing was. Of course, with Axiom, you have the possibility to, um, to get Rainbow Boy's uh, browser history. And with that browser history, we could immediately see which kind of servers he was using, which kind of DDoS attacks he was performing. And while he was questioned, we were at a little police station and we were able to put our modal directly in front of it. Uh, the analyzing process was still ongoing. But after a few minutes, our result was there, and we were able to inform the offender what kind of uh, knowledge we have. And that was the point when he was breaking down. Suddenly, he changed his mind, and he was talking with us. Yeah? And suddenly, of course, he was telling us, OK, it was me. It was a DDoS attack, and I was mad at the police because they catched me some days before when I fighting, was fighting with a friend on the street. It is just a little case, I know. Um, and it is not the big thing we were waiting for. But for police forces, <laughs> when they got hacked their self, um, it is a kind of big thing, because we were learning more about our own IT structure and that we have to fix here and there some things. Anyway, um, but it was another topic for us to know, OK, this is another scenery to work with. Let's see what we have. Um, I don't know if you can see it from, from, from the last places. Regularly, we have police force, like Polizei, on our sides. In this, uh, in this case, we were using Baustellenfahrzeug. Um, what is this translation of Baustellenfahrzeug? <laughs> <laughs> Construction workers vehicle. Exactly, it takes a lot. <laughs> um, um, not, not, not really to be like 100% invisible, but as you can imagine, when it is 6 o'clock and special forces are going in, you have, um, well, you don't like to be visible at the in the first second. Yeah? If they identify us a little later, yeah, so what? Yeah? But we were like 100 meters away, and you can see here was the IP cam. And we were waiting with three officers in the lab um, to have the first artifacts coming in. And uh, um, it was really like that, that nobody on the street was, was really recognizing 
who was it? Was it police? What were they doing there uh, from inside? You know, it's, it's looking like an office. So for us, working on the scene in the field was really, really, really comfortable. The first time, no laptop on the knees, <laughs> no, no dirty enrollment. We had our coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was quite important, by the way, and um, we were really, really happy. Well, let's see. No wasted time in transferring data, I told you already. Securing evidences immediately. Handle big data if necessary. Well, another point is, I just want to let you know, no, we have now the opportunity to store a lot of terabytes on our car. But to be forensic correct, if you have a case that is big like this, what is happening when you are coming home into your station? What to do with this information, with this data? You have to think about that before. In our case, it was, let's say, likely no problem because our car is a part of our own police cloud infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure is containing about um, 22, 25 uh, petabytes of data capacity. And um, we are storing all the child abuse data and um, uh, all capital um, um, things directly in that cloud. And the people all over Nordrhein Westfalen um, working at police forces can use this data everywhere. So for us, it is no problem to drive home to our LKA to put the car into the garage and to pump the data into the cloud. We have uh, 10G. Um, it is working with a 6,800 megabytes per second maximum, but our, our modal is doing lightly like 900 megabytes per second. Well, it still takes a longer time if you have 200 terabytes, but we have the capacity to clean our car. I recommend you really intensively to think about that if you are working with this kind of big data and if you try to work with a Paladin, yeah? you need the infrastructure around. Well, I think this was a, we were using nearly everything we had on the car. Um, some little things, uh, somebody of you might have seen that with Wi-Fi Pineapple, with uh, Wi-Fi Hunter. We were more satisfied with the Wi-Fi Hunter, by the way. Um, it is, Dimitri is from Switzerland. It is from Switzerland, yeah. Um, uh, we were really, really happy to, to, to buy that little device. Um, and of course, you know all the products you might have at your um, house too. So what, what, here we have um, Celebrite UFET Touch. Um, we know that it is difficult to open phones directly on site. In this case, it was working. And in this case, we just need the, the browser history. So it was a kind of easy. But as you can see, from net, network scan, scanning techniques to um, mobile phone um, to Axiom, where you, can, uh, where you can analyze it to other products, we need the complete portfolio to see what Rainbow Boy was doing. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it was a small case for us it was a bit big impact and a big work until we were at that point where we can tell him, hey, boy, that's what you did. And now it's your time to talk with us. Well, some additional benefits. Um, I, I have to tell you that because my, my boss was creating these sentences. Yeah. <laughs> we have the uh, expansion of the... Um, of the range of the services. Of course, it's clear. Um, all these things we are doing now with Paladin and, uh, and the products on this car uh, were, able, were making enabling us to, um, to, to offer this wide range of services now to all police stations. Before, yes, we were kind of assistants. We had all these uh, luggage boxes and we were throwing that into, into a car and were driving on the uh, crime scenery, but this is what, what we were everybody was doing and that was not the kind of help our police stations were like um, yeah, waiting for. Triage is a big point um, for us. Uh, we are, let's say these cars are always only ready for 90 percent. 
um, the last 10% is always evaluation and um, a, a kind of process um, how we handle new uh, kinds of modus operandi, um, whatever. Um, for us, triage at the moment is one of the main points because it makes it possible to figure out what is happening on the crime scene immediately. Some products, they need really hours to, um, to, to figure out what's up, especially when we're going deeper into, um, into crawling, into, um, into parsing of, um, of evidences. Um, it really needs a long time because they are doing always the, um, the full scan. The triage products are offering us, let's say, some spot-wise ideas. Is this the right offender? Is this the one we like um, uh, to catch? Um, more professional handling of mission is clear. And um, well, we have set up a, a kind of a cooperation now. Um, at the moment, the idea is that our DEG, DEG, our, our rapid intervention team, um, is now six people with this car, seven people, sorry, um, seven people with this car, and it is not enough. So we are having a lot of bookings, let's say, in the last months, and it is going upwards because the police stations are now knowing uh, what kind of service we are offering, and um, we figured out that for us, we need maybe a second, a third. Well, at the end, we will have seven of these groups in Nordrhein-Westfalen um, with the start of next year. Well. We're proud to work with one of these tools MH Servers is offering us. Um, we're always happy to be here. We're always happy to be served here. Um, we had never any issues, never any problems. Um, we had a straight working process and learning process, even all together uh, with Martin Hermann and his, uh, um, his team, because it was a kind of... Um, thing that was really invented by creativity and still we have the next appointment next week because we want to improve something. <laughs> um, so the contact will stay. For me and my group, um, it is ringing a phone. Uh, <laughs> for, uh, for me and my group, we are really happy to be here today again. And we are really um, excited what you guys are telling about uh, us about uh, your experience you had in the field. And um, well, if you have questions, please right now. Thank you so much. <laughs>